I am talking to a screen because I have nothing to see, but um, I hope it will be interesting and nice to look at. I have two PowerPoint presentations and I'll start with the main one. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, even if I'm uh, 5,000 kilometers or 3,000 miles away from you, Skype, but especially Reorg are connecting us, which is uh, rejoicing me enormously. Thank you to Simone Lambert for inviting me to talk. I've been working since 2001 at the Royal Institute for Cultural Heritage in Brussels. Uh, I'll say IRPA in the next slides. And uh, we are a federal scientific institute responsible for the documentation, study and conservation restoration of the cultural and artistic heritage of our country. Here you can see, um, it's okay. Uh, here you can see um, the building of IRPA. Uh, this is the painting uh, studio, the restoration workshop for the paintings. Um, this is a, an image of the laboratories and the documentation center. Can you see my mouse going over the screen? Yes. Okay, great. We continue. After attending an ICROM course, Reducing Risks to Collections, uh, in 2007, I became responsible for the new Preventive Conservation Unit of IRPA uh, within the Conservation uh, and Restoration Department. And in April 2013, so almost three years ago now, um, ICROM asked IRPA officially to coordinate a, a, a Rio pilot project. So even if we are a small country, um, Belgium can go 327 times into Canada, <laughs> we decided uh, to keep the project on a national level. And um, our complex structure of two, uh, three communities, uh, three regions, like you see here, one, two, three, and therefore three official languages, is the main reason why we kept our project national on the national level. The north uh, speaks uh, Flemish in Flanders, the south speaks French in Wallonia, uh, people here are speaking German, also an official language, and um, in Brussels um, we are bilingual. The capital of Brussels, almost in the middle of the country, was chosen as the launching platform of the whole organization, but also uh, as the venue of a two-week workshop. Here you see the timeline of uh, the Rio Belgium project. It started in April 2015 and it will end, end hopefully in April 2017, April of next year. You see it uh, here, the whole timeline or the whole line for the, the, the pilot project. Um, we started with they uh, trained the trainers. Uh, afterwards, there was a two-week workshop. And I'll go more into detail of these things in the next slides, but so you have an overview of everything. So four days trained the trainers. After one, afterwards, a two-week workshop here in Brussels. And then um, the museums who attended uh, the workshop started with the phase one part, which is a, a phase of nine months with a home reorganization. We are in the middle of this phase now and also a little bit in the middle of the whole project. Um, it will uh, be finished, the phase one, after a three days uh, conference in Belgium, uh, which will be at the end of October of this year. And immediately afterwards, we will start with the phase two project or a phase two of the whole project in six months uh, reorganization of partner museums. But I will go more into detail now. Um, in April of uh, last year, eight colleagues uh, coming from IRPA and from the different regions and community of Belgium, they came to Brussels to get trained into the reorg uh, methodology. And we met during uh, those days at the Royal Museums of Art and History, where we were trained by Velkio from Serbia and Gael de Guichin in the folk art storage. 
This gave us the opportunity to prepare the upcoming workshop and the collection manager could im imagine herself gradually into the upcoming invasion and new situation of her collection. After those intensive uh, training days, we became a strong but uh, especially a crazy teaching team. Everything fine? Yes. Okay. We created a website to announce the two-week workshop and uh, where you could find the, the criteria for subscription, uh, but also the timeline. And uh, right now, we have also a part for the course material, like uh, the technical uh, PowerPoint presentations, press articles, and the movies. Uh, it took us almost or around one month to choose out of 19 applications. And finally, we chose eight museums for phase one and eight partner museums for phase two. Um, the phase one, uh, eight museums are, uh, of course, uh, the workshop museum, the Royal, uh, the, the Museum of uh, uh, Art and History here in Brussels, um, one museum of the French-speaking part of um, Belgium, the Museum of Fine Arts in Liège, and then you have the Army Museum and the Museum of Social Service of Brussels, who uh, came from Brussels and who were also uh, chosen as uh, museums to take part in the workshop. From the west of the country, you had the Tobacco Museum coming, um, the storage of the Museum of um, Print, no, the Prince Collection storage of one of the great museums of Bruges the storage of the museum and archives of uh, the town of Turnhout and um, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Antwerp. Those eight museums were for, for phase one, they are busy now, and in the phase two we have all the museums in green. Uh, here you can see the, muse the, the eight museums uh, having a, a storage to reorganize and uh, here you see the teams uh, for each, each museum, uh, 16 professionals uh, working in these eight museums. The criteria to attend the workshop uh, were two persons per museum uh, had to be present full time during the two, the two weeks workshop. Um, the workshop itself, uh, how was it organized? It was uh, two weeks in October of last year. The main teacher was Gaël de Guichin. We were uh, seven assistants or trainers, um, two IRPA interns, um, the collections manager of the storage with her assistant and the technical team of the museum, the 14 participants, uh, Belgian participants, two weeks in Brussels, and the official communication language was and still is, is English. Um, the, the reorganization of the workshop and of the storage, I'll show it in a few, in a few moments in another PowerPoint presentation. But um, the phase that we are in now is the home reorganization uh, of those uh, eight museums. They have uh, until six to nine months to reorganize their storage and the deadline is the 15th of August. The general coordination of this whole phase is done by myself and my intern, Laura Debris. I will... We don't see what we, what we do or what we see, but this is Laura. <laughs> she is helping me uh, to coordinate this phase uh, via a Google Drive platform and emails. Um, we are doing the follow-up of the homework of the and they are sending us regularly um, with certain deadlines, documents, which are linked to the four phases of the workbooks. The eight trainers were also divided into three coordination groups. And so um, every coordinating group uh, 
is uh, meant to visit two times uh, on site the museum or the museum he is responsible, he or her is responsible for. And at those moments we provide extra, extra conservation, conservation advice and support like uh, teaching material but also some hours of teaching classes. It's a little bit uh, different from museum to museum. Um, we, uh, three days ago, we had also the first general meeting because in this phase we also foresee two general meetings to meet each other uh, in a Reorg museum. Uh, three days ago we were in Antwerp and at that moment all the museums present their progress um, from their home reorganization. Uh, it's nice to be all together in one storage which, which is to be organized, reorganized, and um, we share problems, especially problems, and we uh, share knowledge and give uh, advice to everybody. The three days conference at the end of September uh, will be uh, will be organized like this. On day one, uh, all the eight museums will present their reorg, so their reorganization with their specific problems, and um, we will ask two international speakers too. Uh, the second day is um, on demand of Ikron will be an international trainers meeting. And with ICROM, we will be looking at the future of uh, reorg re worldwide. Um, and day three, like the small country Belgium, is uh, able to, to pass in three hours or two hours, uh, we will organize a bus tour and visit some of the reorganized storages. So this will be the end of phase one uh, by October of this year. Phase two will start immediately afterwards, and this will be the reorganization of eight partner museums. They are already chosen. We have uh, chosen also two participants per partner museum, and we are a little bit more at that moment to help uh, this museum to reorganize, because you will have the trainers, we are nine, but you will also have the 14 uh, reorg specialists or trainers from the first phase, uh, the museums. It will be a six-month phase, and um, it's not completely clear how we are going to do it, but I have good hope. Because our aim uh, and our hope is by April 2017 to have 15 reorganized storages in Belgium and 38 newborn reorgers. <laughs> I'll switch to another presentation now. Workshop. I'll go a little bit more into detail on the workshop and on the reorganization of the folk art storage, but I think that Simon is going to show the movie that we made from this workshop during the coffee break or the lunchtime. I cannot follow the hours there where you are, but uh, I think this is the plan. Um, so, this is an overview of the collection. Um, you see um, dollhouses, uh, paintings on wood, paintings on textile, on canvas, um, puppets, um, wooden objects, uh, frames, archives, books, um, textiles, uh, things which are wrapped already in uh, silk paper, but also uh, wooden boxes, um, crafts, art, walking sticks, small puppets, complex puppets, um, a, quite a lot, I think, 300 um, puppets which are hanging here and which have to be uh, taken with four hands, so by two persons, uh, uh, a doll, uh, a, a, a toy, um, a horse for the children, and um, yeah, it, it was a bit difficult because you have um, 
you have different sizes to cope with, and we had a lot of sizes to cope with, from the doll's tea set to the doll's house itself. Um, the specific situation was um, a collection of 12,000 objects in quite good condition. Um, the localization system existed uh, or exists, but is uh, really not complete. A totally dispersed collection, I will show you in the uh, next slides. 150 objects on top of uh, cabinets or on the floor. And there was no separate space uh, to study or to work. So here you see, uh, you have the view of the storage and the building outside. And you see on the plan that it's an uneven storage. The first one and the main one is uh, 285 square meters in blue. And it is connected uh, with a small one of 70 square meters, a little bit uh, under the level of the blue one. You can see the teams again. Um, which, which were attending, uh, the professionals who were uh, attending the workshop, um, us again, the trainers, previously trained, and um, we divided the, um, the, uh, the whole participant group into four teams. They all had two coordinators or two uh, assistants with them of the training team, and we uh, divided them into teams to study four different sectors. You see them studying here, uh, drawing the plans, working on the different plans. Um, this was the plan uh, of the situation, how we found the storage, so the, the situation at that moment. And this is a future plan, or the future plan, which was accepted by the collections manager. Um, the main points for this reorganization was to create a space for study and for working because it was not existing. Um, there was a huge security problem. I'll explain it later when I show you uh, an execution plan. We had to regroup the collections by types. Um, and in this case, the managing uh, of the complex moving of the collection was uh, a main point of uh, concern. And Gaël de Guichin had also the, the wish to create a display or uh, an exhibition corridor for all the best objects. Um, the creation of a separate study room, you have it here. We this, this is the main entrance to the storage. We decided to make a study room here. There was also a new technical room for um, storage material, uh, working material. There was a, a second door installed. So we have uh, displaced one entrance a little bit further so that the study room was, is, is, uh, you, can, you can study here without coming into the storage uh, immediately. Um, the implementation of the project for uh, regrouping the collections which were dispersed um, was very complex, but I'll try to explain it um, easily. All objects on the floor uh, and above the cabinets or on top of the cabinets were moved from here to the yellow room. Then the 14 empty cabinets were moved out of the storage. 12 cabinets of books um, from everywhere in the storage were moved to the study room because they had to be there. Uh, 15 cabinets from this uh, storage uh, filled with toys, small toys were, uh, the toys were taken out of the cabinets. The cabinets were moved to this storage room where we had uh, the puppet and the, the toys area and then the um, cabinets were moved to and the toys were put in the cabinets again. You have some um, slides or I show you some pictures of the execution of this moving, but the, 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 the film that you will see is giving a, a better impression. You see some people uh, doing heavy work. This is the technical team of the museum. This is uh, checking the cabinets. This 
was a table, uh, the, the, the part for, um, how do you say that, um, the transit zone, one of the transit zones. One of the participants, Audrey, Griet, a trainer, and Laura, who you just saw. The technical team moving the puppet house. Uh, Catherine with puppets, Griet from the teaching team. And <coughs> Catherine Ankomarki came to help. After three days of complete shifting, uh, 120 cabinets and 42 shelves were moved, 12,000 objects were transferred without personal injuries, and we counted that um, 2,000 man hours of work had been done within two day 10 days, and only one shelf unit was bought. Um, the phase one, so the creation of the team, took us two days. The phase two, uh, the study of the storage took us two days and a half. The, the planification of the project, uh, two days, and the execution, three days. This is the self-evaluation form before, and this is the self-evaluation form after the workshop. I think you know all this. Uh, you all know this self-evaluation form. And this is the final configuration of the storage. You have the study room with the new door, um, the new storage parts, the slots which were a little bit adapted to the types of collection, the technical room, and an exhibition corridor where we, um, I'm going to show you later, on top of these slots we will put, we put cabinets with repre representing the most beautiful objects of the, this part, these small parts of the storage. And here you have the large and new uh, voluminous objects. Um, some pictures of the reorganized space. Um, the exhibition corridor was called the Allée des Merveilles. You see it before and after. Um, there is a little bit more light and it's uh, a little bit um, more pleasant to visit it now. Uh, new, cabinet, new cabinets for exhibition. These are the exhibition cabinets on top of the slots um, with the sides to the exhibition corridor before uh, at the end of the corridor and after. You see there has been uh, some uh, serious adapting of the lighting. Before the study room before and after the new door was coming here or, or is installed here now. You see that the paintings before and after were uh, put in adapted furniture. The theater, theater uh, decors were put um, in the, the only bought uh, shelf unit. So this is the shelf unit that we bought, I think this one, not even this one. The puppets. Um, you see here, under the puppets, it was full with objects on the floor. We took everything away. Everything was put in cabinets. The metal objects, um, it was a mess on the floor, but also uh, on the racks. Everything was put into cabinets, and the big objects were put on the racks. Small objects in drawers. And the before and after of the big, uh, the space for the big objects. The workshop has been closed down by a final ceremony where we had the distribution of the certi certificates. Um, afterwards, uh, the officials, like the directors of the museums, but also the national, uh, there was a lot of interest to, to, to visit this storage. And you see here a picture of the offici officials during the tour of the reorganized storage. Um, to um, um, you see here um, the result of, of one part of our uh, big reorg project. Uh, it's a fantastic team in a, in a small country. Um, this is the link uh, to see the movie. Uh, I think Simon will show it later. And I thank you for your attention and have a great reorg Atlantic. Thank <laughs> you.